Hello and welcome to today's Thanksgiving message. Happy Thanksgiving to you. It is a wonderful day to be alive and to celebrate the things that we are thankful for. And so as part of our Thanksgiving morning prayer today, I wanted to offer us a short reflection. If you're joining us for the first time in our morning prayers, which we have online Monday to Thursday at 7.30 a.m. and Mondays and Tuesdays in person at our church, Good Samaritan United Methodist Church. And so you can join us um, in those times regularly. They are Monday to Thursday at 7.30 a.m. And so our tradition is to follow a Lectio Divina style of reading. And today's psalm is Psalm 43. And we, we read the psalm twice, and then we would pause and reflect and silently read it to ourselves. And I begin our morning prayers with the Lord's Prayer and then the Jesus Prayer before we start. And then I would share a short reflection and at the end um, say a prayer for us as we head into our days. But welcome and, and happy Thanksgiving. My name is Pastor Tim. Um, I'm on the team here at Good Sam, and if you're part of our community, welcome, and if you're joining us uh, for the first time, welcome as well. Um, and you can find our website, www.goodsamumc.org, our Facebook page, which you probably have already found, and then we have an Instagram page as well. But let us begin and centre in a time of prayer. I've lit a candle this morning, so I invite you to do that as well if you would like. And uh, we're going to centre for a moment as we pray. I'll say the Lord's Prayer and the Jesus Prayer um, aloud. Or you can say it with me where you are in your space, if you like, aloud. Or you could just listen and, and repeat it in your heart and in your mind. But let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us, mere sinners. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so I'm going to read the psalm for us, Psalm 43, in two different translations this morning. Um, firstly, the New International Version, which is the Bibles that we have in our church. And then the New Living Translation, which is um, a more modern and poetic, uh, emotional translation for us to listen to as well this morning. So let us enter God's word. Psalm 43. Vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. You are my God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send me your light and your faithful care. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the lair, O God, my God. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so now I'm going to read the second translation for us, the New Living Translation of Psalm 43. Psalm 43. Declare me innocent, O God. Defend me against these ungodly people. Rescue me from these unjust liars. For you are God, 
my only safe haven. Why have you tossed me aside? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with my harp, O God, my God. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my saviour and my God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let us now take a moment to pause and reflect on what we've heard and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us through what we read and, and just dwell in perhaps a verse if you, if you wish to just return to one verse or read the whole psalm again or perhaps just spend this moment in silence and let the words that I've said just dwell amongst your, your heart and your mind and your body. So let us centre now and return to the psalm as we reflect silently. Amen. And so on Thanksgiving Day, we think about the things which we are thankful for. At dinner today, we will sit down with our friends, our families, or perhaps even our favorite TV shows if we are alone. And, and wherever you find yourself this Thanksgiving, I want to encourage you to have a heart that is both kind and thankful. Because it's too heavy a burden to bear otherwise. The psalmist is clear. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? And so there's many things that we can be discouraged about. And there are many things which make us sad. But they are emotions and they are feelings. And we have to have a perspective of hope. Because if we look at the world we now see and we remain hopeless, we get sad, we get discouraged. And so by having a heart that is kind and thankful, we can return to God. There is hope for humanity in Jesus Christ. He has given us the hope of all through the death and victory on the cross. He died for us so that you and I could be redeemed and restored into righteousness with God, our Father in heaven. And so through the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, the same power that rose Christ from the grave, we have opportunity to return to the Father, the Creator, and we are origins of the creator. We are his creation. And so we are examples, living, breathing vessels of the creator. Our humanity is a beautiful thing. We all look outstanding. Maybe this morning we perhaps are thankful that we don't have to look at anyone just yet. But we are thankful because God made us in his image. And we are all uniquely, beautifully made in God's image. And so let us have a heart of kindness and thankfulness this Thanksgiving. Not because it's something that's forced upon us or because it's necessary, although it's helpful, 
We should have a heart of kindness and thankfulness. Because we've been declared innocent. We've been rescued. We have hope. Because we can live from a position of victory, not defeat. We live freely, not captive. Our, our lives may seem like an imprisonment in this body. Our hearts might be heavy with mourning or grief or pain or illness or infirmity. And I pray for you in those things today. But with a heart of kindness and thankfulness, we can look to the reason for that. We can look to the person that is kind. We can look to the person from whom we can give thanks. I will put my hope in God, the psalmist says. I will praise him again. And that's the point. It's not that this is the thankfulness of just one opportunity. This is a thankfulness and a kindness for everyday living, for every morning, for every afternoon, for every evening. So that our Saviour and our God, that's you and I, we both are God's favourites. He has no favourites, but we are all his favourites. He is closer than a brother. He is the head and not the tail. He is the beginning and the end. And so for you, our God, my only safe haven, we return to God because he's the only one. Jesus is the only way to the Father. So why have you tossed me aside? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? It's because we believe in God that we have a difficult life. Because we believe in something that is unseen. We believe in something that is not yet. And we believe in something that is to come. Christ came, but he is coming again. And so we believe in something that is not yet, not seen, and it is by all means not popular in the culture that we live in today. And so when we return to God, we may have a heart that is grieving or oppressed, but we have a Holy Spirit who is light and who is truth. It says, verse three, send out your light and your truth, the Holy Spirit. Let them guide me. The Holy Spirit is our guidance, our counsellor, our comforter. And so we can be sent out. We are Christ's ambassadors. We are chosen. We are favoured. We are forgiven. And we are set free. Galatians 5.1a it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And so let the Holy Spirit, lead us to God's holy mountain so that we can go there from a place to live from, to rest on God's holy mountain, to live with a heart of kindness and thankfulness. And so if you wanted a message for this Thanksgiving, if you come to the table and you realise the things that you can be kind about at dinner to your family, to your friends, to yourself, Wherever you find yourself this Thanksgiving, be kind to those that you are with. If you are on your own or if you are with others, be kind. Love your neighbour and yourself. But first of all, love God. He is the reason that we have hope. He is the reason that we can be kind. And he is the reason that we can be thankful. Verse 4, there I will go to the altar of God. And so today we can likewise return to God, to the altar, to the cross. And often before a Sunday morning service, I will go to our cross. I will walk from our main front door outside of the church. I'll take a Bible with me and I'll do a short invitation here on Facebook Live. But I'll read the passage of scripture that is the reading for that Sunday and I'll walk around the grounds of our church. And the reason I do that is because I believe that God will speak to me and that I can go before the altar. I believe that when I stand before man, I must first kneel before God because my strength only comes from him. I am weak, yet he is strong. He is able. I can do all things through Christ, not through me, 
not through any system or process, but through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so let them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, lead me and you to your holy mountain, to God's holy mountain, to the place where you live. But God is all around us. He's on the potent, on the present. So wherever you go, he's never far from you. We sometimes may vacate the space that God has given us to occupy, but he always blesses the space between us, as John O'Donoghue in his wonderful poetry books, as I read this past Sunday for the ending of the year and his poem, it reminds me that Jesus is also the space between us, not just the void or the gap, but the distance, the time, the geographical indifference. Jesus is between us. So Jesus between us, not just be between us, but he is between us. So whether or not you're physically absent from me right now, Jesus is right there next to you. So if you have a table and you're on your own, set the table for three other persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Maybe don't feed them, but you can certainly set a table for them because they are the persons that are with you today. And that's every day. That's every minute of every moment. You get to that altar. You get to that mountaintop. And you get back to God to pray, to give thanks. Because when we give thanks, we can have a kind heart. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, I did not give you. The Lord did not plant inside of us. But, he says, the author of 2 Timothy, I, God speaking, God breathed. Scripture is God breathed. And so it says, but the Lord did not give us a spirit. The Lord, I, I am. God is the great I am. Did not give you a spirit of fear or cowardice. But the Holy Spirit is of power, love, and a sound mind. And so when we have a sound mind and a sound heart, both our head and our heart, when they come together through the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ, we can have the sound mind, the wisdom, insight and understanding from heaven. And if we are peacemakers, James 3, if we can be the peacemakers who sow in a harvest of peace, we will reap a harvest of righteousness. And so when we remain in God's peace, Christ, the Prince of Peace, at Christmas we remember that he, Isaiah 9, 6, is the... Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. As we come to Advent, as we come towards God's holy mountain and to the altar, as we return this Thanksgiving, let us be led to God's holy mountain, to the place where God lives. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, returning to God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with my harp, O God my God. And maybe you don't have a harp in your house, <laughs> but maybe you have something. Maybe you have a whistle, a clicking of the fingers, a whistle of a tune, um, a song that you can play, a worship band or group or hymn or piano or something that you use to center and to return to God. This Thanksgiving, give yourself some time before you go out into your day, before you sit down to dinner to reflect to have peace and to return and give thanks to God, our Lord and Saviour. And so today, as I pray, I'm going to invite us into a prayer. And some of you may know it as the salvation prayer, but for us, it is the prayer of all hope. And I want us to give thanks, but I want God in return to give us a kind heart. Because sometimes it's difficult to give thanks. Sometimes it's difficult to be kind. So I ask that God would help you to be kind first and foremost to yourself. And from there, you can love your neighbour. But firstly, we must love God. And so as we pray, as we return to God, this Thanksgiving, let's be thankful and kind to ourselves and to one another. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are an almighty God. You are the creator of all things. You created us. And so we ask, Father, that we would remember the origins from where we come from and that we would return ever so gently to your holy mountain and we would praise you. We would give you thanks. 
And so this Thanksgiving to all of our community here at Good Samaritan Church, I pray, Lord, wherever they are, whether alone or with friends or with family, or just here today, this morning on, on Facebook Live, I pray, Father, that you would bring them into a position of gratitude so that they could have thankful hearts and an attitude of kindness, the willingness to love themselves and to love their neighbour. But first of all, Lord, help us all to return always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise to your altar and to sing a new song, to play what it is that is our tune that helps us to worship you. And so, Father, we return to you today And with everyone saying in agreement with me, they are thankful, they are kind, and they, Lord, are yours. So today, Father, accept us again. We return to your altar. We return to your Son. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that you would hear our prayer, that you would divinely interrupt our mornings, and that you would help us to receive hope from heaven. So we ask right now, Lord, hear in this place, wherever we are sat or wherever we are listening, for you to redeem us, to restore us and to revive us this Thanksgiving. We love you, we praise you and we thank you for all these things. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. And before the benediction this morning, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this community. And thank you for taking time out of your day to dedicate time to God. And he is a wonderful and beautiful, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Where does our help come from this Thanksgiving? Our help comes from the Lord Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. May the God of hope and all creation provide you peace and a thankful and kind heart this Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go in love to serve and give thanks to God Almighty in Jesus' name. Amen. God's peace to you today. Happy Thanksgiving.